So this is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and so we're going to light our last candle in our Advent wreath. It's blue, but if you have one of the other versions of the Advent wreath, it might be your last purple candle. And then this evening at our first Christmas Eve worship service, we will be lighting our Christ candle to celebrate the arrival of Jesus Christ. But it's appropriate for us to begin with prayer. So will you pray with me? Gracious God, we don't want to forget all of the steps of preparation. So many things happened in order for you to come to us as the Christ child on that first Christmas. And so today, as we are preparing for many different things in our lives, not just this holiday celebration or worship, but for the unexpected things and the things that we have been planning that we hope will come to fruition very soon. We ask that your spirit and your peace would be over all of them as well as all of over us. And Lord, as we continue to get ourselves towards the day in which we remember with great joy that Emmanuel came to be, we ask that you would comfort those who feel lonely and strengthen those who feel weak that you would watch out for those who are struggling with their bodies and their minds and their spirits, that you would help those who are so busy and so worried and concerned to find rest and to know that no matter what, that they are beloved and that we, as we continue this time of devotion this morning, will feel your presence with us in tangible and surprising, edifying ways. Thank you for your love, for your inspiration, and for your abiding presence in Jesus Christ. In your holy name we pray, amen. So if you haven't been with us all during Advent, just a reminder of why we have a second nativity from our big nativity on our altar, it's because we've been creating a non-traditional nativity, just like my child used to do when he was in preschool and playing in my church office. I had a lot of nativities up all year round, and he got very comfortable not just playing with the figures in my nativities, but also bringing his toys to play. And it was wonderful to see unexpected people show up at the stable to meet and greet baby Jesus. And that's really the point of Christmas, is that everyone is invited to see baby Jesus. And so we've got our non-traditional nativity set up with our very traditional pieces. We have our stable, we've got Mary and the donkey, we've got Joseph and our brownish red cow over here from the first three Sundays of Advent. We've We've got Clark W. Griswold Jr. and his wife and his Aunt Bethany, and we've got Uncle Eddie over here in his pajamas, which you might be wearing this morning since we're not having church in the morning today. We've also got the Parker family. We've got Dad with his little major award. We've got Mom, who's not so thrilled about that. We've got little brother Randy, and we have Ralphie in his uh, pink Easter Bunny outfit looking like that over here. And then on our third Sunday of Advent, when we lit our pink candle, we got a group who is really known for the color pink, and that is Barbie and Ken. And we have two other Barbies over here, President Barbie and Gloria, who is um, power work suit Barbie over here. So who are we gonna add today? Well, today I thought we would add a group of people who were also considered unlikely friends. So you may not have seen their TV show because it way predates you, but I have the Golden Girls this morning. I've got Rose, and I've got Blanche, and I've got Dorothy, and her mom, Sophia. And one of the really nice things about the Golden Girls was that this was four women who were even older than I am, and they chose to live together and to have this wonderful household together. Now, that didn't mean that they didn't do things that many households do, like fight or laugh or have trouble or celebrate things, but they chose to be with each other. And that's really what we're talking about in Christmas, is that God chose to come and be with us in a whole new way in baby Jesus and so we're celebrating that and while this evening we'll be celebrating the arrival with our Christmas Eve worship today it's nice to add our 
four golden ladies to our nativity so that they too can be ready to celebrate with this whole gaggle of really unique and unexpected people who don't show up in everybody else's nativity, but they're in yours and mine this year here in our children's time. And so if you have the opportunity to look at your toys or maybe a nativity that's in your house, who would you like to see show up and share their story, their gifts, and their fun with baby Jesus? It's a great way to get ready for tonight and for tomorrow Christmas Day. And we're so glad that you've been a part of telling this fun story. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the prophetic book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 18 and 19. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, Therefore, he will rise up to show mercy to you, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Truly, O people of Zion, inhabitants of Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, Today, there's a lot of preparation happening in many households and many places as they're getting ready to do their final things before they close for Christmas. And we here at Crozet United Methodist Church are certainly doing our best to get ready for three worship services this evening. And as we do that, it's always appropriate for us to pause in our busyness and take a moment and focus on God. It's God from whom we draw our strength, our encouragement. It's from God where we find our moments of rest, even in the busyness of our daily lives, much less our holiday ones. And so this morning, we've gone way back in the scriptures to the prophet Isaiah. So many pieces of that large prophetic book talk about the messianic prophecies. A lot of the names that we draw from for Jesus, such as Prince of Peace and Wonderful Counselor, come from the book of Isaiah. And we have spent all of Advent journeying through the Lucan Gospel account. We've been traveling through multiple angelic encounters with Zechariah and Mary and the shepherds last week as we saw that each encounter opened with the phrase, do not be afraid. And that's because when God is doing something, it can be overwhelming. Even though we've waited and we've asked and we've looked for that moment to come. And so this morning, as we have this small time together, let's look at what the text is telling us. The Lord has waited to be gracious to us. Therefore, God will show mercy. It's coming. Sometimes we wonder why things don't happen exactly when we want them or when we need them. And think about how many generations, countless generations from our modern perspective, we're praying and yearning and waiting for the Messiah to be born, not realizing that all that time God was at work. They just couldn't see it. We couldn't always see it either when God was at work in our lives. And today we have an opportunity to look where might God be doing something. Or perhaps for those of us who are trying to go a little deeper in our faith, where is God asking us to be part of what God is doing, not just for us and for those we love, but for the world. And so all of these things, all of the preparation with Zechariah and Elizabeth for John the Baptist, with Mary and Joseph for their child Jesus, and the shepherds to have that encounter with the Messiah, all of those things happened because God had already been at work in people and in places and in times that were unexpected and not clearly known to the people of the world. And today is the same. By the time we gather for worship for our Christmas Eve celebrations, so many things will have already been done. There will be those who were volunteering and those who are part of our staff here at the church who will have already done their work in preparing their pieces and the things that are entrusted into their care. I will have already done my work in preparing for the various messages that we will have at those services. But all through that even, God has been doing things that we have not seen yet, and God will bring them to fruition. So as you have this moment today to think about that, Remember that when the prophet Isaiah spoke those words to God's people so long ago, it was a people who were broken and battered. It was a people who were struggling, some of whom were in exile in Babylon. 
some of whom had been left behind and felt that the world had totally disregarded them. So many of God's people have had the same feelings that many of us have, wondering whether or not we matter. Is God watching? Does God care? Does God pay attention? And the answer from Isaiah and from all the scriptures is a resounding yes. God very much cares. God is so in love with you that God is doing things that you cannot imagine and working in ways that you won't know, perhaps not for a long time from now. And for some of us, we won't fully appreciate what God is doing even now until we are resurrected and enter into the kingdom to come. So when God says to God's people through the prophet that God is waiting to be gracious, the ultimate goal of what God is doing is grace, is blessing, that unmerited favor, showing God's people, all of the people of the world, for God claims them all, that God loves them and wants to show them mercy and kindness, forgiveness and compassion, all of which spur from God's love. And so what we find here is that God is promising to be that God of justice that we need to right the wrongs, to help us to know, no matter what anyone has said or done to make us feel anything otherwise, that we are of sacred worth and beloved to God. And truly, O people of Zion, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which one day will be all of us, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. And perhaps that's what is so important for us as we are taking this moment to pause in our busyness, is that God needs to hear from us. God yearns to hear from us. We forget sometimes that one of the greatest catalysts for God's intervention and action in the events of the scriptures is the cry of God's people. It was the cry of God's people, the Israelites in captivity in Egypt, that had God respond and call Moses up into service and bring him and Aaron to face off against Pharaoh that God's people might be freed and allowed to enter into the promised land. It's the crying out where God hears individuals. That's exactly what was the catalyst for the angel Gabriel showing up to talk to Zechariah when he was doing his service in the Holy of Holies, is that, Mer that his wife Elizabeth and Zechariah had been crying out to God with their prayer. We want a child. And God heard and God responded. Now, we have prayers that we have offered up and sometimes we wonder, does God hear us? Yes, God hears us. And perhaps this is the encouragement we need to know that we need to be praying not just for what we want or what we need, but we need to be praying for each other. We're not truly a church, the body of Christ, if we're only concerned about one part of ourselves. An entire body cannot only care about a single hand. Instead, we all need to be caring for each other, paying attention, looking for where there is hurt and pain, and working together to have those things not only commended and lifted to God in prayer, but also to be part of the attentive work that we do. So in our busyness of today, let's make sure that we don't forget about paying attention to people the people that we're hosting or the people that we're going to visit, the people with whom we'll be worshiping, even the people that we won't see today. Let us not forget one, for God has not forgotten even one of us. And may the rest of your fourth Sunday of Advent be filled with the remembrance that God hears us and God is at work, even if we can't explain with our words what, where, how, or why. God is always at work for us and perhaps it's our job to show up with all that same expectation of children on Christmas morning and look and know that God has been here and let's see what God is doing. May it be so. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.